Concept-based te based teaching, this will never happen. But if you just uh, memorize some rules and algorithms and some memorization techniques for solving problems, this can often happen. What happened? Did the rules change? We're just, we're just adding fractions. The, the rules all changed. A lot of times students have been uh, learning basic operations for a few years even, since kindergarten, and they've never seen a fraction. So when they come to fractions, they think, wow, the rules changed. The rules didn't change. And by the way, what we're going to show you here is just one of the methods we have for teaching fractions. And some of the pieces that we use for fractions, we use other manipulatives also to teach fractions. Hmm. What if I use this? What if I use this algorithm? Which is just a, I use that word, it's just a, that, all that's a fancy word. All that is is a fancy word for a problem solving technique. Hmm, let's see here. I'm going to multiply this one times that one and that one times this one. And then I'm going to multiply this times that. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, and then I'm going to add these guys together. Wait a minute. I multiply this times that, and then I add those two together, and then I multiply these two together, and of course I come up with 5, 6. Seen classroom situations where this is the way it's taught. Whoa, let's see. And they even have the little arrows in the textbook. This is no help. What we have is... Concept number two, or what we're going to do is count things that are same. So let's get a basic understanding of what these fractions mean. All right, what we have here are some fraction styles. Now what I want to stress is that this is only one of the ways that we can explain fractions to children. Now, do you see here I have one, and I've made it bigger so I can manipulate it, and we can talk about it. There's one... But now here's one, broken into two parts. And here's one, broken into three parts. And of course we could break it into four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc. Now, let's see, further I can go here and see that I have actually one of two. It would take two of these to make this. In other words, it's half of this. And here I have one of three. How do I write this? I need some symbols. One of two parts. One half. This is the numerator. It tells me how numerous. This is the denominator. The denominator, the name of it, tells me what kind. So here I have one of the halves kind. Here I can show one of the thirds kind. And if I had two of them here, of course I could say I have, how numerous is it? Well, this time it's two of the thirds kind. So let's get back to our problem. What I had was one half plus one third, and I wanted to know how much I had. And to make it more real and tangible to the students, let's tell a little story. The story is very simple. I have a box of cereal, actually two boxes of cereal. One is half full and the other is a third full. And I want to put them together. Now for little kids, we can just ask the simple question. Uh, if I put a third and a half together, will I have enough room in the box? Take it a step further. If there is enough room in the box, how much do I have? How full will the box be? Well, here's a half and here's a third. And we need to understand that fractions like you and I don't like to wear the same clothes over there. In fact, sometimes they like to wear disguises. Now, here is one half with no disguise on. But now, I put a disguise on. Here is one half, but now it's two of four. But you see, it's still just one half. Now it's three of six but it's still just one half, equivalent fractions. Here is one third. We can do the same with one third. One third is the same thing as two, one two, of six. One two of one two three four five six. And when you get larger, you can see that we can also teach skip counting and multiplication using these fraction tiles at the same time as we're teaching fractions for the very young students. Now, let's see. Because I'm pressed for time, I'm just going to do this. 
I know, because I have some experience in mathematics, that I want six kind. We can develop that with the students. And once again, because I'm doing this very quickly in an overview, fractions alone, we could spend two hours teaching fractions on a tape or on a uh, DVD. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we've got the same kind now. We have three of the six kind. And you can even see if I flip this around that these pieces are exactly the same. They're exactly the same size. And again, this is only one of the ways we teach fractions. Here I have two of the six kind. Now that I have same, same kind, remember concept number two, we only count things that are same, I can see that I have the same kind here. Three and two is simply five of the sixth kind. And we can see that it would fit in a box. Because the box isn't full, it's five six full. So that's how we get one third, or excuse me, one half plus one third is the same as five six. And what we did is we just multiplied by one. And when we get to the algebra, this will be very important to understand. Right? Instead of all those arrows, we just multiplied this by one to get three of the six kind, and multiplied this by one, two over two is the same as one, to get two of the six kind. It's five six. We make this simple and easy for the children to understand. And this, I took a slight leap here, but all we're doing is showing clearly and concisely fractions. Now, one thing that I've had happen to me on more than one occasion is I have teachers ask me, well, how come when you multiply fractions, they get smaller, and when you divide fractions, they get bigger? Because it seems that in regular numbers, if you do division, the numbers get smaller. And this shows a fundamental misunderstanding of what we're doing. All we're doing is counting. And in order to make these ideas clear to you, uh, you'll have to watch another training video where we do fractions. But certainly it's not the fault of the teachers. If they've been taught this way, and the people that taught them have been taught this way, they might get confused as to why uh, when you multiply things seem to get smaller. If nothing gets smaller, we're just counting. And when you do division, things seem to get bigger, but nothing really gets bigger, we're just counting. Here, we just started with a simple problem in addition. 